This is section 4.4. This is part one. Now, the things that you see here in front of you uh, to start are not in your note packet. You'll need to write these down. Uh, if you take the bottom of your the bottom left corner of your 4.4 note packet and write this stuff down, I'm going to cover this first, and then we're going to talk about some of a couple of the proofs here. Okay. In section 4.4, our objective is to use triangle congruence and corresponding parts of congruent triangles to prove that parts of two triangles are congruent. Okay, So now <clears throat> we're going to say in a proof that, okay, once we have the triangles proved congruent, we can now say all the corresponding parts are congruent. Very similar to 4.1, section 4.1. And then we said if we show that all the corresponding parts, angles, and sides are congruent to each other, we can say the triangles are congruent. Well, if we say the triangles are congruent, now we can say that all the corresponding sides and angles that are not marked are congruent as well, which is essentially what is just said right here. Once you prove two triangles congruent, then any other corresponding parts that are not marked are congruent to each other. This is similar to taking the definition of congruent figures and using it backwards. Okay. Now, there's a saying that we're going to use, and it's and I've got it here to the left in red, and it's what we call CPCTC. It's a reason that you're going to use in your proofs, and the, what it stands for is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's what CPCTC stands for, and that's how we're going to abbreviate it in our reasons. Okay, So... What we're going to try and do in a proof, we're going to prove, first of all, we've got to prove that the triangles are congruent. So we may have some steps before that in order to get to proving triangles congruent. Okay. Then once we prove triangles congruent, we're going to go ahead and match any corresponding parts that we have. Essentially, they're going to ask us to prove the corresponding parts are congruent to each other Okay, with CPCTC. Okay, so again, the spiel that I kind of just went through here uh, is the same types of things as it's talked about up here, okay? So let's go ahead and let's start diving into some of these proofs. Now, you'll notice that these proofs are slightly different, okay? On these proofs, this time you're given angle KBC, which is this angle right here, is congruent to ACB, which is right there. And then angle K and angle A are congruent, and this time it wants you to prove that KB and AC are congruent to each other. In other words, this segment here and this segment here are congruent to each other. No longer do you see that the triangles are going to be proven congruent. But that's the first thing we have to go through and do. Is we've got to prove that two triangles are congruent. That should be our goal first. Prove the triangles are congruent. And then we can say the sides are congruent by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay. okay, so as you look here at the given, we've already got two angles matched up. So as you look at your ways to prove two triangles congruent with two angles matched up, you essentially are going to try and look for either angle side angle or angle angle side. Okay, One of those two reasons. And as you look at this picture, the one thing that you can see that they both have is that BC is a shared side. So we could say BC is congruent to BC. Now, as I'm looking at the reasons here in my proof, we can say that the first reason here, that's given. Okay, We can also now say, we said we saw we sh uh, shared side there. So we can now say that BC would be congruent to BC, and this is by the reflexive property. Okay, reflexive property, and once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and mark my shape. So I mark my shape, and now, as you look at it, I have enough information because I've got angle, angle, side on the bottom triangle, and angle, angle, side on the top triangle. So now I can say that my triangles are congruent. So I'm going to say triangle KBC is congruent to triangle ACB by angle, angle, side postulate. Now, is that my final answer? No, because if you look here at what they want you to prove, they want you to prove that KB and AC are congruent to each other. Now, how do I know that? Well, 
I've shown that the triangles are congruent to each other. So I can now say any side I want that's corresponding or any angle that I want that's corresponding is congruent to each other by the corresponding parts of congruent triangles or congruent theorems. So this what we call C, P, C, T, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, so again, the goal is to prove your triangle is congruent. Then you can say all the corresponding sides and angles are congruent as well. Okay, let's take a look here at one more example here in part one. And you've been given that BA and DA are congruent. And you've been given that CA and EA are congruent. CA and EA are congruent to each other. And we want to prove that angle C and angle E are congruent to each other, okay? Well, I know right now I've got my given written in, so we can put that as our given, okay? And as you look at the picture, we've got two sides. So now again, as you look at your reasons to prove triangles congruent, because remember, you're trying to prove triangles congruent first, there's two of them with two sides. You've got side, 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 and you've got side, angle, side. Now, there's no way for me right now to say that BC and DE are congruent to each other. So I'm not going to be able to use side, side, side. But I do have one thing in here that I can use. And I can say that angle angle CAB is congruent to angle EAD. So these two angles right here are congruent to each other by the vertical angles theorem. Our vertical angles are congruent. Okay. And if you now look at your triangle, I have a side, then an angle, then a side, and a side, an angle, and a side. So now I can say, I've got enough information here to say that triangle CAB is congruent to triangle EAD by side angle side postulate. Okay? Now, once I've done that, I can say any, now that I've proven triangles congruent, I can say any side I want, any angle I want that's corresponding are congruent to each other. Well, in the proof, they want to know why angle C and angle E are congruent to each other. Well, they're congruent to each other because I've already proven the triangle's congruent. So C, P, C, T, C, or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay. So a little bit added, uh, a little bit different type of proof as you're looking at these. Okay. Um, but this concludes section 4.4, four, part 1. Uh, make sure that you finish your WSQ.